The bottom of the forest is more, of course, there's a lot of the old pine needles and there's lots of twigs and there's the uh, pine cones and all that stuff. So that's a little bit more of a brownish look. Woo! Now I mix those two. It doesn't matter. They're going to be mixed anyway. And then French ultramarine blue. I'm going to put that up here. And so that means that I'll be using more of the red and the yellow down here, where up here I use more of the blue and the yellow, and then a little bit of red to kind of get some more neutral areas. And I don't mind getting a little bit of green there because, you know, um, these snow plants, when they pop up, uh, it's usually like it's April, April slash May. So a lot of times there'll always already be little sprouts of other things coming up with fresh green leaves. And sometimes you can also have snow on the ground because we know it can snow it pretty much. When I, when I first moved to Truckee and I asked, um, uh, like, when does it snow? Kind of like, you know, when does it start? When does it end? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, the answer I got was, ha ha, it can snow any month of the year in Truckee. <laughs> <laughs> so, so much for that. So I just um, got some clean water on my big wash brush here. And um, I don't mind at all if it overlaps a little bit in on my trees, because you know, the last thing we want um, at the bottom of the trees and also the bottom of these little snow plants is straight lines, because that's really not what it looks like. Because there's all sorts of stuff peeking up and obscuring the bottom of the trees and also the bottom here. So that's why when I masked it up out, I did my, you know, I made sure that it wasn't a straight line across. I made it so that, you know, hopefully that can then be interpreted as like some, some little stuff sticking up where the snow plants are coming out. So here we go, good and wet. And um, so I'm gonna put some, now, I don't want it too red either because, you know, the snow plants are going to be bright red. But I'm going to start with a little bit of red because that's what's going to help give me that brownish color here. And then um, we can put a little bit of yellow, especially around here. And I think I also would like my... my uh, foreground to be can be a little lighter except down in the corners here corners I always like to have it a little darker can you see hopefully I'll get some nice greens kind of muted greens nothing too bright the only real bright thing here is going to be those snow plants I think it's getting a little watery get a little bit more of that blue and you know, when it's this wet, you have plenty of time to uh, move things back and forth color-wise. Like if things are uh, to one color, you just put one of the other colors over. And if it's still kind of a bright color, then you put the third color over. And sooner or later, it's going to be mud. more muddy. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be mud. And down here, we don't mind too much if it's muddy. Cobalt blue, you say? I actually am using French ultramarine blue. My feeling is that if I use cobalt, it. but if you have used cobalt in the other part of your painting, I would say stick with that. But I didn't. I used a French ultramarine blue. Um, so there we have that. And a little bit more here. I think I want to go with a smaller brush and get a little bit more serious color on. Serious meaning more pigment, less, less water. And I like, I have kind of like a little bit of a highlight there. I really like it. Yeah. So if you see something like that happening and you like it, by all means, leave it, right? I should probably call it quits pretty soon. Yeah, so it's nice and neutral, but I got different things going on. And uh, then I'm going to grab the plastic wrap and 
I brought a brand spanking. I, I didn't. I actually had it. I just had forgotten to get it in my bag last time. So I'm gonna take a nice piece, and then this time, remember last time we were kind of going for vertical mm -hmm. patterns. This time I want to go for a more kind of horizontal and not, you know, kind of jumbled patterns. So I like to just kind of gently lay down, scrunch it up a little bit, and then I see what happens. And I lay it down on the wet paint. Uh, Lori, we used the usual colors, red, blue, and yellow, and we just mixed them here on the bottom, um, wet into wet, and now I'm putting the plastic down and seeing what happens here. I think I like what's happening here, so let's just see if we can get a couple more little, like that. What do you see in your mind's eye as you're putting the... I'm seeing just some good patterns that could be interpreted like uh, little grasses sticking up, some lo you know, little branches, and maybe even some rocks, pine needles, that kind of stuff. It's very abstracted. And so I think I'm happy with that pattern. So now we'll see. Time will tell, right? And you know, just press it down a little bit and then we're gonna put it aside. And that's gonna be your first project. So we can get that to dry, so we can finish it. So, step one on this one is, let's get our masking off. And you know how it is with masking. We don't wanna let it sit on for too long. All right, so you can see I lost most of my drawing there, but I'm gonna just uh, wing it. And um, I got my bottom a little bit lighter. Needs a little, needs a little help. But I think once we get these painted, we'll kind of figure out what we need to do. So let's just uh, at least find the shapes of some of these little plants. So I think what I'll do is I have a little bit of blue over there. So let's check a little tiny bit of the French ultramarine blue, and then I'm just kind of making a little bit of a cooler red right there. Can you see the difference here? I put a little bit of French ultramarine in, and then here, where it's clean. So that can I can use that for putting a little shape on them. So I think the best thing to do is to find another brush, this one maybe. So I'm gonna put a little water inside. So let me start with the back one here that I have. So I'm gonna put a little bit of water inside this guy. Just like that. Can you see that? A little bit of water inside that one. And then I'm going to go in and take a little bit of that red, quinacridone red on, and I'm gonna start down here where I know it's gonna be the darkest. And I'm just gonna paint around those snow plants that are in front of it. And I'm just gonna go up like this, there. And then I wet that plant behind, yeah. Yeah, this one is wet, yeah. So, and then I'm just dragging, I rinsed out most of the pigment out of my brush and I'm just dragging this red up into the wet area there and you can see it spreads nicely. And my, rinse it out my brush a little bit better now. You know, in watercolor, we basically go from light to dark. So meaning that we have to kind of think about saving our lights. So right now, I'm just uh, making sure that I get the color on and then I have it a little bit darker, of course, down here, away from the light. That's gonna help push out these other ones that are in front of it. So now I'm just adding a little bit more of that red in here. And um, maybe I'll try and see if I can get a few of these little, they have these, like it's asparagus heads almost like, mm -hmm. right? They have these mm -hmm. fun little things. And it's still wet, so there's it's gonna flow. But if I can just get a little bit of that in, 
would be nice. Just a little bit. There, holds a little bit better. So I'm just doing a little bit at a time. I'm not trying to do too much. Oh, that's what it was. Just like, okay. So here, and then maybe a little bit down there. So I'm already feeling I'm getting a little bit of that sense of that shape. Mm -hmm. I like that. So now I'm going to go into that red that I toned down a little bit with the French ultramarine blue. And I'm going to run a little bit of that in here while I can, while it's still damp. Hopefully it's not going to bloom on me. There. And then maybe up there, catch a couple of these. And then there's going to be a little tiny bit here and there. You know, we're just kind of hinting at some of these shapes. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So that's for beginning that's good enough. Let's do another one. So we cannot do that one and we cannot do that one because they touch and this is still wet. So we got to move somewhere else. So let's move to this one back here. I think it's a little easier to do them the ones that are in the back first because they help outline the front one. So I'm going to do the exact same thing putting a little bit of water inside and then I'm going to start with pretty intense quinacridone red and I'm just going to start down here at the bottom and that way I can kind of outline the shapes of the little snow plants that are in front and go kind of like this and so and you can see how it flows up because I put the water in here so it's hitting the water and so it already helps me give the shape of those in front too, uh, that we're kind of breaking it up a little bit at a time. So a little bit more pigment in there, and then I'm gonna rinse it out, dab, dab on my water control station. And then I'm just gonna start pulling that pigment up, thinking about, you know, getting it the lightest at the top. And sometimes you need to go in and rinse your brush again because, you know, once you start pulling it up, you get pigment in your brush. So I'm going to just pull it up a little bit more here. There. All right. So far, so good. And I might go in. I think I need to make myself a little bit of a thicker, thicker, darker red. And so I took some more of the French ultramarine blue. Now this is obviously way too purple. I don't want it that purple. So I need to put some more red in, but I'm thick, I'm going for a little bit thicker paint. So I took the water out of my brush before I mixed it. Yeah, that's more like it. More like what I'm after. Dab, dab. And let's see if we can go in and get a little bit more. Ah, see, now we're getting dramatic. So that was just the thin red and the French ultramarine. French ultramarine blue. Now, if you have it on your palette, uh, permanent magenta, which is a reddish purple, is the color that I really like to use for um, darkening reds because it doesn't go purple so quickly. But if you don't have it, you know, this is how we do it. I've got magenta. Is that the same thing as permanent magenta? Uh, ma uh, quinacridone magenta is different than no, permanent magenta. magenta. Just plain magenta. That I, I would have to see it I'll because that I'm not it, familiar yeah. with. Sorry. Maybe it's permanent. I don't know. Just yeah. Like permanent is this one here. You see that? Very dark. Right, reddish yeah. purple. So, and the reason I have it on my palette is not because I can't make purples. As you can see, we, we have no problems making purples. It's just that this particular uh, color, when you put it in the red, it just goes blue. It doesn't go as purple. So it makes it a little easier, but we can totally do without it. And we are doing without it. Uh, so now I can go back in here because I know it can definitely darken down here a little bit. And I can go up and create some of these little edges of those little, I don't know what they're called. Bracts. What are they called? I'd say bracts. 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 B-R-A-C-T. Okay. Bracts. Bracts. 
And I'm going to go down here in between where they kind of come, you know, just to indicate. And then I'm going to, with a damp brush, I'm just going to soften the edge a little bit. Can you see how I'm beginning to get mm -hmm. those little shapes? And uh, this is not meant to be for, uh, you know, a botanical magazine or anything like that. So as long as we just kind of tell a little bit about what these shapes are like, that's, in my book, that's good enough. So I'm just going to doctor them up a little bit more. And maybe I want to go in and do a little bit brighter here. Don't want to lose that nice brightness. And in between here, in between here. So I'm just going a little bit at a time and trying to evaluate and see what, what's happening. And if I like what's happening, I do a little bit more. And if I don't like it so much, I try to take it away again. Right there. It's beginning to look a little bit like those little guys. So let's just uh, do a little bit more on this one. So I'm just trying to separate, you know, these little guys mm -hmm. and dark pushes down and light brings forward. So I'm by putting a little bit of darkness in between, it kind of separates them and they start coming forward. Part of them start coming forward. So let's just do a little bit more. And I just do, as you can see, I just do a little bit at a time because I don't see, I wouldn't want to end up with hard lines like that. Mm -hmm. I want them more fussy like that. I think that looks better. So right away, I cleaned out my brush and then I go in and I kind of um, loosen the edge and, and uh, make it a little bit less defined. And I go in with a little bit of a darker here, maybe like that. In between here. This one here is a little harsh. It's okay. A little bit more here, maybe. There. And a bit like that. And just rinse it out. A couple of these here got a little harder than maybe is perfect, but that's okay. So that's really the method. And so we'll, we'll try and do that on them and then we'll reconvene one more time and see what we can do. But I would like you to have a chance to go down and try at least a couple of these. And you know, these little guys here, I'll finish them. I'm, I'll finish them on camera at home because, you know, I won't be able to finish them completely here. So I would probably doctor around with them a little bit more. And basically, I my philosophy is I try to put in as little detail as possible and still have, have I mean, and, and have it read the way I want it to read. I, I don't, I don't want to go too bananas with the, too many hard lines and too much detail, but you can see just by bringing out a few little areas, and especially since we have a, a little clump of them, all of a sudden some shapes that, you know, didn't look like anything earlier, once we have some other shapes that are telling us what it is we're looking at, they start, you know, then abstracted shapes start reading like <coughs> as if we painted it. Uh, so that also applies for the flowers here. Or, or it's actually a fun guy. All right, so I'm gonna finish the last three ones on uh, in my studio so I can show you here. So then, you know, we have our background and uh, I don't have very much background here, but if I felt like I wanted to bring out some more shapes, I could go in. If I wanted to bring out some of the lighter shapes, I put a little bit of water on them, kind of scrub a little bit back and forth and then I grab a tissue and I lift it out. You know, so it becomes a little bit more apparent. So sometimes like here, that could look like a trunk, I feel. That was coming out up here. 
So if I want to say that a little bit more, I can lift out a little bit. And I don't have to lift the whole shape out, just a little bit. And this is again one of those I do a little bit at a time and see if that was enough and if it wasn't. So that was lifting it out. So now it's a little bit more visible. But if I wanted to um, make it even more visible, maybe I would grab some of the um, the color I have here, which is French ultramarine blue, and it's kind of green. This has a little green tinge to it. So I use the same color, it's called local color. So I'm using the local color. So I just happen to have that right in here in my palette. How lucky was that? Mm -hmm. And then once this is dry, I can go in and then find that edge that I wanted to bring out a little bit more. Say it's this edge here. Mm -hmm. So I put a little color in and then right away, rinse it out. Damp brush, see how many times I go on my towel to just have it damp. And then I go in from the dry side before this dries on me and I stick my little tip of my brush into there and kind of slowly guide the color out because don't want it to look outlined. Just want to put something dark next to that light area. Can you see how it's coming out now? And now you can see it. Even if you couldn't see it before, now you certainly can. And then I'm like, and then once you start doing this, it's so fun. Then all of a sudden, there's gonna be some other shapes that are telling you what they want. Like these here, they want it to be brought out like this. Can you see? Yeah. All of a sudden, there's kind of an interesting mm -hmm. shape back there. And because I have a bunch of tree trunks, you're probably thinking that's a tree trunk. Mm -hmm. If you think it's a tree trunk, guess what? It's a tree trunk. <laughs> if you think it's a spider, it's a spider. It's that kind of thing. All right. So then my, my foreground, I'm not super, super, super crazy about it. So the light's obviously coming from this side. And I don't know if I have really said much about that there. Not really, but I can go in. And again, you know, obviously I have kind of a mixture of these three colors. I'm gonna, I can go in also to bring these out a little bit more go in here with a little bit of that kind of a greenish color French ultramarine blue yellow, yellow and I think it's kind of toned down with a little bit of the red and then again lose the edge lose the edge lose the edge and then some of these here I mean you could decide that some of those shapes and I'm, I'm you know I know I only have here, I have a bunch of muddy colors, but I know they're all French ultramarine blue, transparent yellow, and the red. So I can't go wrong, really. And here I have a lot of muddy colors, too. So I can go in here and find a color that speaks to me. Dark kind of a thing. And then here, for instance, what if I wanted to say that here, you know, there's a lot of dead branches lying around on the, on the bottom of the woods. So I went in and put a little bit of dark underneath here. And again, the important part is lose the edge. And so I could kind of choose some shapes that I could emphasize a little bit, not too much. We don't want them to fight with the star of the show, but a little bit here. And that way we could start kind of making a little interest in the foreground and then once that's dry I could go in and uh, if I wanted to be like fancy dancy I could go in with a dry brush find another dark muddy color of some sort and uh, I could start maybe making some little texture on just a little bit don't go you know don't get too cutesy with this but can you see how you can go in and just kind of put some little texture on to just kind of say maybe it's you know, a bit of a dead, you know, one of those branches that died and fell off here. So I just go in and I look at some shapes, try and find out what they could be, and then I go in and make them look a little bit like that. And it doesn't look so much like it the first couple of times you do it. Um, but then if you find some other shapes and then all of a sudden it starts kind of coming together and, and, uh, looking like something. Um, yeah, so 
Again, I have very little room in my background, but it's still nice. I really like what I brought out there. That it just, and just a couple of them is enough to start telling the viewer that, oh, there's stuff going on back there. Um, and if you don't have anything, of course, you could always go in and just lift something out. Just come, you know, if it isn't there, you can still make it up. Like, I can kind of sort of see faintly. Need a little brush that was up. So, you know, I can go in here and, and uh, because a lot of the colors here, they are French ultramarine blue, it lifts out very easily. Need a little bit of a more stiff brush, but if I lift it out a little bit like this, ah, now we go, now it's, now something is happening. Can you see? All of a sudden I got a little kind of a, it looks like there's a little peekaboo of a branch and it'll be even more of a little peekaboo if I then afterwards go in and darken a little bit behind it so that not only I can see it, but you can all of a sudden also see it. And just a little bit, nobody says you have to, you know, paint the whole tree back there because they're kind of, you know, hit and miss. Then they get obscured by something else. There, I think that that kind of brought that up a little bit. So then there's a little something peeking through the woods there. And uh, so here might also be, so there's also these kind of weird little roots or whatever that are lying here in the forest ground. So you could go in and break up this one, let's see if I can find a good color to do it with. Nice and muddy. This is one of those times where mud, neutrals, neutrals, they are just dynamite for this stuff. So I'm just dabbing around and then I could go in and, you know, this could be a root of some kind. And so I'm, I'm looking to create some of those little, uh, you know, indentations or whatever that's going on in these roots. And just a little bit at a time and see what you can bring out. And then you don't have to finish it all in one go. If you're kind of stuck in a place, then go work somewhere else. And then later it'll probably tell you what it wants to be. That's what how I look at it. And then here, here and then that disappears in there this could be even darker here 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 nice and dark and so why it's still a little damp okay. and I go up here a little bit and can you see how I'm breaking up these little shapes to some other little shapes and hopefully by the time I'm done with this it'll be um, I'll have done enough to kind of indicate some little neat things and some other stuff and see in here there's a little thing lying across there i see it and that's how it goes for me anyway i start somewhere and i'm kind of confused and i don't really know what's going on and then i just make something up and then next thing i know all of a sudden i see these little shapes that i didn't notice before and i they start looking like something for me all right so I got color on all my snow plants. These three front ones, I just put um, quinacridone red and um, lifted it out or thinned it out on the um, side where the light is hitting them. And so now I'm going to go in and uh, put some more shape and form on them. And I have my colors mixed. I have my quinacridone red here. I have some French ultramarine there. 
and I have the red darkened in a couple of stages here for my darkest dark on the reds. So I'm just going to go in and uh, put some of these little shapes on like that. Rinse out my brush and with a damp brush before it dries I'm going to go in and loosen the edges a little bit. There. I already showed you that in class, but I thought it would be nice to with a little repeat, just in case you need it. And down there, can you see how they are getting a little shape? And you just want to make sure that you loosen some of those edges so that it's not all hard edge, because then it doesn't really look as nice. So here's that. So here you can see. This one already is looking a lot better. And I wish I could show you some pictures of these snow plants for those of you that are not familiar with them. Um, but, and I know I have some somewhere in my many, many thousands of photos and I cannot find them. Took them a couple of years ago. Um, but I found, you know, lots of pictures of snow plants. Um, online. However, you know, I don't want to get in trouble with using copyrighted material in my YouTube videos. So you have to Google them yourself and so you can see what they look like. Um, and later this spring I will go out and take some more photos of the snow plants. They grow in the back woods where I live up here in Truckee. They, I know they are, they also uh, are, you can find them in the Yosemite and you know lots of different places in the High Sierras. Um, and I'm not sure but probably also other mountain regions here in North America. Um, and in my description here underneath this video, um, I'll have I'll have um, the Latin name of them also, uh, so that you can find them. But I just googled snow plants, and a whole bunch of photos uh, came up, and also the uh, Winnipeka on uh, you know a little bit more about what they really are, which they are a fungi. Uh, they're not a flower, they're a fungus. And they come up um, in the spring and have these fabulous bright red floor looking things like we're painting here. And uh, I'd never seen or heard of them before I came up here. Didn't know they existed. And I know when I've been teaching it, this painting, in my classes, a lot of my students, they didn't know what I was talking about. They had never heard or seen of these before, so that's how we can learn things. Even things that have nothing to do with watercolor, we learn a little bit about flora and fauna. And uh, it's kind of fun, I think that we can learn new things all the time by painting and then yeah I just think they look fantastic in my in my view they look fantastic just alien looking almost so I'm just really kicking up the drama here with some darks in those little golden spots um, down here in between the plants and they grow exactly like this, kind of in clumps, um, at least the ones I've seen. And um, yeah, so they come up in April, May, and very often, you know, we'll get a later sh late snow, and then you'll see them poking up through the snow. Now I chose to paint in the forest uh, floor without snow on 
I'll probably paint another painting of these guys at some point and then I'll I'll have some fresh snow because it often happens you know we get uh, snow in April May even into June sometimes so yeah I think I'll leave these to be right now I might have to tweak them a little bit more but I think for right now they're pretty good so now I have to work on my forest floor and that's going to take me quite a while but I'll give you a, a little glimpse of what I'm going to do to it and then I'm going to show you the final result because I would bore you to tears if you had to sit here through probably several hours of me painting and thinking about what to do because that's how it's going to go. It's going to be a lot of thinking about what to do. So um, going to make myself a dark color and so I have up here I should probably zoom out a little bit again there up here I have a burnt sienna that I mixed from French ultramarine blue um, and then the red and the yellow Grenacadon red and transparent yellow and that if I mix those three colors together, the three primary colors together, I get a uh, burnt sienna. And here's my French ultramarine blue and if I put some more of that on, I get very a dark brownish grayish color and I want to put some of that in here. I'm just using all those little shapes that I created with the um, plastic wrap that I put around the bottom here and uh, so now I'm just gonna use some of those shapes that appeared by doing that and um, I'm gonna hopefully make you believe that there's a bunch of little twigs here because that's exactly what's there on the forest on the forest floor, a bunch of little twigs, there's pine needles, all sorts of stuff is going on. And um, by putting a little darkness in behind some of the lighter shapes, um, I can start making it look like some twigs, maybe like that. And um, it's going to take quite a while to get this done. And of course I could just leave it abstracted. There's no rule against that, but I'm going to I'm going to try and bring out these fun little shapes. I've decided so. Just going to I'm just doing a few little things here just so you get the idea so that when you see the finished painting you kind of know what I did without having to suffer through the whole the whole process and in these types of paintings trust me there's going to be a lot of sitting and staring at it I find that when I am finishing up a painting I probably spend more time staring at it than actually painting on it because I need to kind of figure out what's going on. So here, I'm gonna let that soften out. And I use as many of these little shapes as I can. And sometimes, you know, they don't work. So then I just paint over them. Or I modify them a little bit. So again, let's loose some edges here. I hope you can see that this eventually will um, start looking like twigs, branches, and that kind of stuff. And again, just finding some of these little shapes. 
and very important to loose the edges so things kind of blend out and blend in with the background. So I'll do a whole bunch more of this off camera and then I'm, we're going to reconvene. Okay, so I have worked some more on this painting with the snow plants and as you can see I brought up, out a lot of rooty shapes, uh, meaning like roots. Um, and the only thing I think I want to do is um, I want to take some of the muddy colors that I have on my palette and I'm going to put in some little puddles. I'll show you. Put in some little puddles a couple of places. Maybe here. And just a couple here. So I'm kind of trying to make it puff up a little bit. and. Um, then I'm going to take my newest gadget. So I have these to start with. My newest gadget, which is this electronic duster. I have a video where I show how to use that, and I was thinking that might be just ideal for trying to get some little twiggy shapes up. So, just to give it a little bit more of an authentic look of the forest floor, the floor of the forest. And I'm just doing a little at a time, I don't want to overdo this. And I think I want something that's a little green. So let's see, so we're kind of maybe indicating that some it's springtime, you know, so some of the little grasses are finding their way up. There. And... Just a little at a time. You got to just pass it enough for the for the blower to uh, push things around. So a couple over here maybe. There. I am not doing it very strong, it's a fairly faint color because you know I don't want it to go overboard here. And I think a little up here would probably be a good idea, just a little bit. I can break that edge I have up there. So there. And maybe another one kind of here. Yeah. One more. There. I think I better call it a day pretty darn soon or this is going to be completely overworked. So here's another little trick for you. I have a mat that's cut in two pieces so that I can just uh, make it smaller or bigger depending on what I need. And that's just for testing out and seeing if I'm done. And once I put a mat on it and it's not lying on my dirty uh, painting board here, 
I think this is actually, uh, it turned out pretty good. Let's take a little bit of a closer look for you. There you see. That's not too bad. So I hope you had fun doing this and I'll see you in a new video very soon. Happy painting!